Spiritual Connection 101 by Kyle Gray on Divine Master's Ancient Wisdom Book. When you are when you are delving into the spiritual realms, it's always good to have an awareness of how to keep your energy safe and protected before your imagination starts running wild. I just want to say that spiritual protection is less about protecting yourself from dark forces and more about just keeping your sensitivity open and ensuring that you're not picking up energies that aren't yours. Especially as when you begin to open up to higher dimensions, you become more sus susceptible to the energies that surround you and often the energies that aren't yours to carry. Have you ever walked into a workplace and felt intense anxiety come over you or walked, or, or walked into a room and known that someone there isn't in a good mood or gone to a hotel for the weekend with a loved one and got the feeling that something strange has happened there or had a conversation and walked away feeling the other person had sucked the soul right right out of you that's what you want to protect yourself from weird vibes that aren't your responsibility weird vibes that stop you fulfilling your purpose even weird vibes that you can help with but don't want to be affected by for a long time i would talk about putting on my psychic protection but i was still experiencing sensitivities and being drained by the energies of others over the years, I have, I have honed my, my skills and I've come to see that there really is a difference between psychic protection and spiritual protection. Psychic protection is when, you're, when we're trying to protect ourselves from a lower vibration and often creating energies that attract challenges in the process. Whereas... Spiritual protection is about inviting a higher power to protect us and not expending our own energy doing so. There really does seem to be a limit to how far our human psyche and energy can go. Believe me, for a long time I was trying to protect myself when there, was, when there were spiritual beings and angels who could do it for me. Having said all this, I still often forget to protect my energy and find myself in situations that feel draining. What I do then is politely say, can you please excuse me for a moment? I really need to go to the bathroom. Off to the bathroom I go, I lock myself in a stall, summon my angelic protection and go back feeling safe and energized. Angelic protection process. Here is the most up-to-date four-step angelic protection process that actually works. It will create an armor of light around you. I based this process on a daily skincare routine. You know the one, the cleanser, gets rid of all the muck and grime. Exfoliating helps removing anything no longer needed in the surrounding area. The, to the toner firms up the skin, and the moisturizer locks in all of the goodness. You can do this exactly the same with your energy. Cleanse. First, you need to cleanse your energy of any vibes that aren't serving you, anything that's hooked on or attached to you from a challenging conversation, place, or a person. Here are a couple of ways to do it. You can, imagine, you can imagine a sacred fire energy coming from Mother Earth and burning away any unwanted energy that is attached to you. As it touches fear-based energy, it transforms it from fear to love. You can ask Archangel Michael and his angels to cut the cords of, any, of, of energy that's holding you, of energy that are holding you back, or attached to your energy field with the following prayer. Thank you, Arch Archangel Michael and angels of protection, 
for cutting the cords that bind me to people, places, energy, situations, and any other stuff I no longer need. It feels so good to know you are here. I am safe and free. Exfoliate. Exfoliating is all about clearing away any dirt or debris surrounding the area you are working on. In this case, once you've removed any lower vibrations or negative cords that are, that are binding you, it's important to invite angels to clear the space around you. Archangel Metatron is dedicated to helping remove lower vibration. He works with sacred geometry to shift harsh, stagnant energy. You can call upon him to use his magenta light to clear your space with the following play, uh, with a fo with a following prayer thank you Ar archangel metatron and angels of sacred geometry for clearing the the energetic space that surrounds me thank you for removing any lower vibrations blockages stagnancy stagnancies or anything else that could be standing in the way of love I welcome your support as you transmute and transform the energy around me. And so it is. Tone. Toning is all about firming up the goodness that is already there. When it comes to toning your energy, it's about focusing on a positive aspect of your present situation or harnessing a blessing or choosing to remember your own worth, claim your wholeness, like declaring that you are completely in control of your body because it's the vehicle of your soul. You can say this in your own words, but make sure you are speaking in the present tense and really putting your foot down. Let the universe and your guides bear witness to the incredible inner strength that you were born with. My favorite de declaration is powerful, simple, and effective. I am the keeper of my mind and body. Wherever love is present, fear is a stranger. Love is here. When I say love is here, I tap my heart three times so I can feel a physical response to what I really know deep within me. Moisturize. When you are moisturizing your energy, you are essentially putting on a coating that you know is going to lock in the goodness. This is the step that everyone knows from books and healing modality trainings, but it won't be truly effective unless the previous steps have been taken. There are a few ways to do it. You can declare that there is an armor of the holiest light surrounding your whole body and being extending 10, 20 feet, 3 to 6 meters in each direction. Imagine a cloak of light in the color of your choice, swirling all over your body, and imagine yourself in a suit of shining armor from head to toe. Again, make sure that the protective light you create radiates about 10 to 20 feet beyond your body in every direction. Really bring that into your vision. Or you can call on your guides and thank them for protecting you and the energy that surrounds you. You are the keeper of your mind and body. This is a particularly important principle to connect with and embody. It's often said that we're, we're out of control when we're connecting with spiritual energy, but we're not. This is a complete misconception. First of all, I've come to understand through working with beings of light that they're always respectful and kind. A lot of these energies are big forces of love, though, and with a lot of love, there is the risk of being mentally and emotionally overwhelmed. The reason that connecting with spiritual beings can feel so overwhelming is because the human self is trying to comprehend a spiritual energy from a human perspective. 
From this perspective, we cannot fully comprehend the energy of the spiritual, and so, when it comes in, it can knock us off our feet. The truth is, this is divine love, a love that is so fiercely loving that all the self-limiting beliefs, ideas, and stories we've learned along the way are challenged in an instant. This often creates some sort of a healing reaction that allows us to clear out the cobwebs in, or in order to hold more light. Now, this isn't always practical. We might not have the time or space for it. We might have practical issues to deal with instead. It's important to know that the divine beings we work with respect our earthly commitments and honor, honor them. If we say at any time that the energy we are feeling is too much to handle right now, they will understand and draw back. I've often said something along the lines of divine love and spiritual friends I'm connecting with at this time. It genuinely feels so good to know you're here and to feel you like this. Thank you for staying close, but also for ensuring this energy is less intense so that I may operate in the physical realm. They always oblige. Another concern that many people have when dealing with spiritual energies is the fact that they're not in control and that their body can be used in some sense. I think we can thank paranormal movies and television for this. The truth is, the spiritual realms honor the spiritual law of choice. We have free will, and spiritual beings respect this. Spiritual energies cannot enter our body without an invitation, and even then their energy is subtle, loving, and, and respectful. There are a lot of stories out there about people being taken over and even speaking in a language that's unknown to them. If you ask me, I find that disrespectful and in some circumstances racist. I'm not going to... That's not going to happen to you when you connect to the divine masters. There are your friends and spiritual allies. They want to help you process this realm and move into a heightened state of being. Their energy will support you, not put you in any circumstances that will challenge you physically. So if you ever, if you, if ever you feel overwhelmed when spiritual energy comes close to you, know you are in control of the situation. You are the keeper of your mind and body. This is your vehicle. You are in the driver's seat. And right next to you is Source, God, whatever you would like to call it. Just do what I do if ever spiritual energy feels overwhelming to me. I simply treat it the same way I would treat someone who got too close for my comfort on the physical plane. I use the authority of my voice and heart to hold space for myself and say, you're too close for my comfort. Thank you for stepping back. They must honor this. In moments that feel intense on a spiritual level, I also call back my power with the words I use when toning. You will remember them. I am the keeper of my mind and body. Where, wherever love is present, fear is a stranger. Love is here. And again, when I say love is here, I tap my heart which really helps me embody my power. Use discernment. Developing the capacity to connect with the wisdom of masters, guides, and angels comes down to being able to discern who is doing the talking. We all have a voice of infinite intelligence within us, but we also have a voice that is limiting, fear-based, and challenging to deal with, the ego. One way that I've been able to overcome the limitations of my ego voice is by making peace with it. For a long time, I tried to fight her off because for some reason, I picture my ego as Karen from the TV show Will and Grace. But I've realized that as soon as I try to fight with my ego, I create a war within my own mind. So instead of pushing her away, I acknowledge her. The way we become one is by 
eliminating all third parties. Over the years, I've also found a particularly simple way to determine who is doing the talking, any talking, just by how the conversation is flowing. Now, I want you to know that often spiritual beings and guides, including masters and angels, will speak to you through your own inner voice. This inner voice is the master within. We'll meet that master later in this book. You can call them Christ Consciousness, the inner teacher, or even the inner Buddha. Whatever you want to call them, they're there, and they are the vehicle masters will often use in order to communicate. The best way to determine who is doing the talking is by checking in with how you feel. This is why listening to the body is so useful. If you're feeling agitated, overwhelmed, or even angry, it's most certainly your ego talking. The ego is annoyed, angry, furious even, bitchy, limiting, and always in a rush. When your ego is speaking, your jaw will clench, your ass will clench, and you will feel uptight, scared, insecure, and small. The ego always operates in linear time, space, and fears, consequences. For example, you don't do this, something bad will happen. When divine intelligence is speaking, everything is calm. Even if you are in the most stressful circumstances, there will be a feeling of peace. The voice of love is peaceful, calm, cool, determined, collected, present, firm, and fair. When divine love comes through with a message, it's always, it always trusts in the greater unfolding. Even if you're in a life or death situation, it will be peaceful, calm, and collected when it's speaking, and you will feel this energy wash over you too. You have a choice in every moment and every message. My prayer is that this information will help you decode the spiritual connections you are making.